All right, here we are. Um, I am what they call an Encore Fellow in nonprofit um, capacity building. I, I'm currently um, uh, about to await another assignment. I get placed with six month to one year uh, stints with nonprofits by virtue of um, a foundation called the Encore Foundation, which takes people of a certain age, like me, and embeds us. Uh, my ha I happen to be uh, focused on three things, communication, uh, engagement, and uh, fundraising. And it's turned out that uh, WordPress has become probably the platform of choice for a lot of the work that I'm doing now, so I've kind of backed into it. Uh, I learned about, I didn't really know much about WordPress until I worked overseas and I we had, with an organization that had a number of websites. So my background was working with <clears throat> a lot of proprietary sites we developed. I was working in Stockholm and we had, it was a worldwide NGO and we had like five different websites and we were constantly churning through them, some were huge. And I had a webmaster who said, I'm going to do the next website in WordPress. And I went, WordPress? That's a blogging platform. Well. That was seven or eight years ago, and of course, since then, I've learned quite a bit. Um, so what I'm going to talk tonight about tonight is about the use of WordPress in nonprofits and mission-based organizations. Now, a nonprofit is a mission-based organization, of course, but there are other organizations that may not necessarily be a nonprofit that uh, might be having campaigns or trying to attract attention. And this is a based on a, uh, on a presentation I made at two word camps last year in 2015. And so um, when Tom put a call out for somebody to speak, I kind of said I could dust this off and see what's new and what's not. And so I updated it a little bit, uh, took some stuff out that I felt was superfluous to a crowd like this. You guys don't need to know about where to get resources for WordPress. It's everywhere. So I took that out. And I'm going to be focused mostly on these things. Uh, WordPress and nonprofit works. And what makes a compelling a compelling element. What makes a compelling website for a, uh, a, a you know, uh, when you're using WordPress? The use of landing pages. Landing pages are important for everybody, of course, but they're especially critical to the work of most nonprofits. Uh, online fundraising. There's no way I can go into this any more than just a, a quick breeze through. This could take up a presentation itself. It could take up a whole week of presentations. Uh, presenting facts visually, otherwise known as infographics. And the use of newsrooms, um, that's in there for a reason. Uh, you're going to see me go on a rant tonight. It's about this, because not too many nonprofits do newsrooms very well. And the use of WordPress for storytelling. Storytelling is all the rage. Um, but in nonprofits, the storytelling is really essential to the mission. I'm curious, how many people here work for nonprofits? Oh, wow. Um, good to see you. And then we'll have a little discussion afterwards. I'm hoping that maybe you will lead the discussion. I have a few points to start off with, but I think we will do all right if you just come up with your own ideas. What I hope you'll take away from this is some best, web best website practices for nonprofits, some ideas for handling them in WordPress, and some useful resources to check out. Believe me, this is going to be a quick breeze through. It just gets you thinking about what you might or might not be looking for. Now, what do most nonprofits need in a website? Well, of course, they need easy management, probably more than most organizations. Uh, they need a modest learning curve because they don't have, the, they have neither the time and, and generally don't have the technical expertise to really get expert in, a, in the technical nuances of a program like WordPress. They need power and scalability because if they want to scale up and if they want to um, wrap up their mission, if you will, or meet new needs, they need that in their website. Need reliable support, and it's always out there with many of the folks in this room who could help really tweak and improve a website if they can't do it themselves, so, you know, through some expert programming and um, customization. It needs to be mobile, of course. Everything needs to be mobile, but more so with the nonprofits because they're pretty much central to the whole idea of raising support and money. And finally, of course, it's got to be low cost. None of that, I think, should come as a surprise. What are the basic practices for a nonprofit? This is changing, I must say. I left it in here because the idea is get the board on board. When I first made this presentation, it was still fairly true that a lot of, non lot of nonprofit boards would be talking about a web presence. They usually come from the corporate world or people who have much more resources than a, the nonprofit for which they are a board. 
So they needed to be sold on WordPress because the, uh, the, the, impl the implication that it was just a blogging platform or something. So they, you need to get the, uh, your board really attuned to what WordPress is. Um, in order to do that, you really need to start exploring the ecosystem so you can talk with some kind of authority. And of course, you need to approach it as a CMS, not just a blogging platform. Think expansively. You're going to have to think about dedicating staff. Now, that's a tough one in a nonprofit because many people in nonprofits wear multiple hats. But someone really should have the, the keys to the website, and even, if, even if it's shared. But someone should have ultimate authority over it. Otherwise, you get chaos. I've seen it. Uh, you need to build fundraising into the basic design. And what I mean by that, you just don't weld on some, some fundraising uh, app at the end and hope it works. It's really going to be built into the whole uh, fabric of the site. Uh, you got to integrate social media smoothly because, again, that's another, this is another thing you could spend days on. Social media is so important to gaining support, to, get, to engaging your constituencies, and especially for fundraising. And right now, fundraising is so important for these uh, nonprofits. Be purposeful and cost effective. Think very carefully if you're a nonprofit or if you have nonprofit clients. Think very carefully about what you're going to do and if there's going to be a benefit that is worth the investment of time, resources, and money. I'm going to start to blow through this really quickly because I have 45 minutes, so I'm going to really rock it through it. So what's a good nonprofit website? It has an engaging homepage. You'd want that for any website, but it's really essential to engage people, make it look like it, it, this isn't some, some little uh, you know, back office uh, operation. You need to look like you're a legitimate organization. It needs to have clear navigation, of course. It needs to be up to date. And boy, I could go on a rant on that because a lot of, <laughs> lot of uh, nonprofit websites are not up to date. They don't have current news. The la you know, and, and I would recommend if you don't have current news, take the blog part down, take the news part down because it just looks stale if you're a few months old. Uh, it needs simple language, of course. It needs a mix of images and media, if you can do it. It needs quick access to critical information for supporters and stakeholders. Now, this is important if you're selling in a commercial end, but it's really important for supporters and stakeholders because they want to see how legitimate you are. But what's a great nonprofit website? Well, first and foremost, right at the start, it should relate to the audience, either visually, through words, or the mission, or as a tag, are you tying into a current event, or that type of thing. Uh, it should generate a powerful first impression, of course. It should make the mission clear. Again, this could be another rant. Um, uh, you'd be surprised how many nonprofits you go to their websites, and you're not quite clear what they do. They may work with children, or they're in the, you know, the environmental field. But what do they do? And so you've got to make that clear really up front. Uh, you need to collect, connect the solution to the problem. So you're addressing a problem as a nonprofit, and unless you've made the... What, made clear what the solutions you're providing to those problems. Pretty much within the first five minutes on the site, you need to, they be, the people need to understand what you're doing, why you, why you need their support. It should be pretty clear. And of course, it has elegant navigation, not just clear navigation. Elegant navigation. But there's more. Um, every good web, yeah, website for nonprofit really has got to have a, you know, a really bold call to action. You're asking your visitors to do something. Get involved, donate money, write to their congressperson, start organizing groups, start working with kids, volunteer, whatever. You should have a bold call to action. You should offer useful infographics. Often the story may be so complex that it's best served by providing a, a good infographic. Excuse me. It's current and genuinely informative. Again, I'm going, to, I'm going to hammer on this because if it's not current and informative, people are going to get turned off. It should not be promotional. Plays well with social media, of course. Stays fresh and grounded. Now, what do I mean by that? Stays fresh means it's not just the information, but it must, it, it, you can't have old flash pages on there or anything like that. <laughs> A lot of websites for the nonprofits look pretty antiquated. You've got to look at least like you're up to date. It doesn't have to be too you know, slick, but it also has to be grounded. It's kind of a balancing act. And a lot of you don't want to go overboard with too much um, uh, what could be interpreted as gimmickry, because the people giving money to you go, well, gee, it doesn't look like they need the money. Or you don't need the support. You've got this slick website. So you don't want to look too slick. 
it gets more confusing. So WordPress is a platform for all that. They're the reasons. It's all there. It's, you know, there's a huge ecosystem there. I'm not going to go through them here. And here's a bunch of sites. You don't need to see those. But these are all done by, done on WordPress. There's plenty more. Now, here are some de design resources that are geared towards nonprofits. The first one I'm going to put up there because uh, it's a little bit of a plug because I'm starting to organize or reorganize the Boston chapter of the Nonprofit Technology Network. And if anybody wants to get involved in that, please let me know. But of course, web presence is a huge aspect of that work. The other is NetSquared, and they have a fairly good Boston chapter. <coughs> and they're a little more technical oriented. They, they, they are trying to match nonprofits up with specific tools, and a lot of their work has to do with, um, you know, WordPress or any of the common platforms, but they do a lot of work with WordPress. Nonprofit Tech for Good is, Tech for Good is a good organization. They can help you raise money. They can give you information. And, of course, there's WordPress.org, which gets better every time I look at it. Now, let's go on to landing page strategies. Landing page, most people know what a landing page is. It's distinct from a home page, but it has a specific purpose. And in the commercial end, it could be a lot of things like selling, a product offer, or a sale. But for a nonprofit, the big purpose is to engage, to get people to take an action. It can be used in campaigns, initiatives, offers. Um, it should be simple. It should be elegant and striking. It needs to have that call to action very clear, and of course, it needs to be mobile. Now, here's, here's some of the tricks. Um, these aren't things that I developed. This is comes this this sort of um, body of expertise comes from a var variety of people who I've talked to. Um, you know, you build mailing lists of squeeze pages. That's an important part of it. You recruit members, you fundraise campaigns, issue advocacy. Issue advocacy probably is becoming one of the great major um, parts of the mission for nonprofit websites. And it just turns out that WordPress is excellent for it. Um, you're promoting events, you're promoting big news, your response to an online action. And what we're going to do here is talk about that in a little more detail. I can't go into all of these in detail in the time we have. <coughs> Some examples, though. Um, Change.org, if you're familiar with Change.org, their whole business is landing pages. That's what they do. They create landing pages to get people on board. They, write, they really do a good job with it. Move on to another one. Sort of partisan, but they do a pretty good job. And here they've, they've done two things. They have uh, got some information. This happened to be when they were trying to get, um, I think it was South Carolina, to take down the the Confederate flag from the State House. <coughs> so, needless to say, they try to get people involved in the action, but at the same time, it's open for money. You can overdo that, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I like this one because it caught my attention. This is when the churches were being burnt down south about a year and a half, two years ago, and it was, um, they just want you to get involved. They weren't looking for anything other than support, and names, um, you can argue against the use of color and all that stuff in design, but I just like this. This is a squeeze page. That's all they're looking for is your, you know, your contact information. This looks a little ironic. Um, right after the midterms, uh, you know, the Democrats were pretty good at this type of thing, looking for um, people to support the Democratic Party and the, and the cause. And of course, with what's happened recently, I, I just think it's a little ironic now. It's looking old. Uh, another squeeze page, very simple, gets to the point, they don't waste time, they have a phone number up there, look how bright it is, how, how prominent it is, you know, basically all you need to know. IFA, they're down the Cape, I don't know if you know, of any time there's a whale stranded or anything, or, or some seals are washed up somewhere, IFA is involved down the Cape or around the world. Um, they're a little complex here, and, there's a, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute. They have a, you know, a bit of a longer uh, description of what they're trying to do. This is a donation. They're looking for everything. They want everything on one page. They did that right. Uh, they put everything on a quickly summarized page. This one, <clears throat> I'm putting it up here because I'm on the fence about it. It's Canadian Red Cross, and I'm trying to hit on them, but 
There's something about it that leaves me cold. I thought the, um, there's too much information in here. But I'm putting it up here because you can go this long if you really have something that you believe is going to, to it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a <coughs> judgment call. If you have something that you think is going to engage people. I'm not so sure this is it, but um, it's an example. Now some guidelines. First and foremost, stick to the single point. Don't go off topic. Um, brand, should be branded. Your, your brand, your visual brand should be there, but make sure it's distinct. They don't, you don't want people to confuse it with your web page, your website. Um, that means only asking for essentials. Be very clear. Use minimal or no menu. The best ones use no menu. You can, if you want to click on the logo, they will probably take it to the website but you don't want them wandering around elsewhere <coughs> from that page. You want them to stay with the page and at least decide if they're going to take the action you want them to take or not. And this is really important. You want to go along with the text when the ask is substantial. In other words, when you have a complex story to tell, when you have a, a message that needs a little more explaining, you can feel safe going a little bit longer you know, in the text, in the exposition, maybe even the video, um, but for simple squeeze pages, get right to the point. Sign up. Here's the information you know you need to give us if you want to join us, and leave it at that. Don't make them work too hard for a squeeze page. The tools are everywhere. Um, I'm currently fiddling with <coughs> the Divi themes from um, um, uh, Elegant Themes. I think it's, it's called. Yeah, uh, Divi. But you can get them everywhere, and there, there are people who specialize in developing just just those. Um, some best practices for fundraising. Again, I'm going to have a caveat here. This is going to seem a little lightweight um, because this is a, this is probably one of the biggest issues. Online fundraising is really one of the biggest issues facing nonprofits now because everybody wants to have, even if it's even if there's a personal. Or, or an old-fashioned mail aspect, you know, direct mail aspect to fundraising. The anchor is almost always now online. So, the first and foremost, this is really critical with WordPress, is embed the process. Again, don't just weld it on at the end once you get the rest of the website. That means thinking about mobile uh, right from the start, because a lot of people now increasingly are making their donations, or at least getting linked into uh, <coughs> websites, nonprofit websites, through their mobile devices. It's not just a phenomenon for the, for the, you know, the for-profit and uh, commercial world. Put a donate button on every page. It doesn't have to dominate, uh, but there should be a, a really clear way for anybody who wants to, uh, on any page, to press the button and call up the information to make the online donation. You want to optimize your thank you pages, and a lot of people aren't doing that yet, but the best ones are. What I mean by that is, once they've donated, you don't just come up and say, thank you. That's nice. You're going to say thank you, but you want to suggest other actions. You want to help um, perhaps use the thank you page to, and you've probably seen it yourself. You want to use the thank you pages for uh, having them make, take social media actions, um, buying something else, getting their, their, um, uh, their, their credit card. Uh, anything. We'll, show, we'll see some examples in a minute. And finally, it must strategically sync with social media. Social media is essential to the fundraising process now, whether you, know, whether you like it or not. Um, we're talking Facebook, Pinterest. Don't overdo it, but you should have a few major social media channels which just sync seamlessly both in terms of content and functionality with the donation part of your page. Now, what do we mean by optimizing the thank you page? <clears throat> this is the only part I'm going to go into a little detail here. First and foremost, another call to action. You may want to take a poll, get them involved. A simple poll, by the way, not a complex one. Um, offer other ways to get involved with the organization as a volunteer or perhaps even joining uh, some sort of special campaign. Uh, you want to put a thank you video if you can, particularly if you're a benef beneficiary. So if you're uh, working with kids, you want a video of someone working with those little kids. Uh, if it's an overseas, uh, if you've got a global NGO focused on you know, uh, global development, 
it's always great to have uh, videos from other cultures there. And of course, you want social network sharing, and um, that's probably the most optimal one you can use. I like this. This is an example from uh, Moms Demand Action, and um, all they did was they asked people to um, um, <clears throat> contact Cabela, the sporting goods um, organization, uh, to, uh, I guess, have a closer control over the firearms they sold. And um, they thanked, and then they offered three very easy ways to do a, uh, a social media sharing. Um, Oxfam included a video. We can't run it here because this is just an image. But a uh, very simple message. But right on the side, there's a, uh, a video of someone who was a beneficiary overseas of one of Oxfam's programs. Again, though, look at the bottom. There's the social media sharing right there. Uh, WWF, formerly known as World Wildlife Fund, not the Worldwide World Wrestling Fund. I don't know why they went with WWF, by the way. Um, but in this case, they, uh, they have an app to offer. They're you know, offering, they're suggesting you um, continue your support through the Amazon Smile program. And of course, they've got their own um, credit card, which they get a nice piece of. Um, they probably are among the elite in raising money, <laughs> both globally and online. Program strengths. This is why WordPress is really my favorite in, in this particular area. There's an enormous array of plugins and uh, themes. The ecosystem is very, very rich. Um, it works with all the key uh, transaction processing, online fundraising sites, that uh, it's outside his network for good, PayPal, Razu, any of them. And for many larger organizations, even some small ones, and we'll talk about this one in a minute, uh, integrates with BlackBot and Salesforce. Now, does everyone know who BlackBot and Salesforce are? Are you familiar with it? BlackBot um, is now known as BlackBot. It used to be called Razor's Edge. They bought Razor's Edge, the company. It is sort of the premier. <coughs> I'll call it a CRM system for nonprofits, but it, you know, it's really for fundraising. And it, um, ironically, is extremely expensive, but it's easy to use. At the other end, most people know what Salesforce is, but Salesforce now has quite an active um, nonprofit provision. Um, they have made a commitment as an organization to, I think, donate 1% of all their profits to nonprofit work and good works. Um, <clears throat> so the integration with both of these is really, um, it's essential, and I have not heard of anybody having a problem integrating any, you know, WordPress sites. Salesforce will also, Salesforce.org will also yep. give yep. nonprofits ten, ten the cents. enterprise version. <coughs> yeah, beat me to it. We're going to talk in a minute about that. Uh, what he meant was the, the Salesforce has a foundation, Salesforce.org, and right now, it's been that way since they started, actually. You can get, as a nonprofit, 10 free seats at Salesforce. But if you know Salesforce, free is nice, but you're still going to have to customize it, and the learning curve is ex extremely uh, steep. It works very well, by the way. And, but they also, they like WordPress now. They have a very rich ecosystem of, um, of supporting apps um, and consultants who can help you do what you need to do. But you get the seats for free, but it's, it's going to cost you some money. It's a great, it's a great program, don't get me wrong. And of course, that part of that comes from the open source development of APIs. Once again, some resources you may want to take advantage of. Network for Good again, Nonprofit Hub, it's online. The one on the right, AFP, Association of Fundraising Professionals. I would say five years ago, they just gave non on online fundraising a little bit of a section. Now as you go there, almost all their programs are you know, focused on how you integrate your online presence with, um, you know, with their fundraising program. Very sophisticated, a lot of, a lot of um, hardened, you know, battle-hardened pros contributing to the, the forums at AFP. The conference is very good, by the way. Um, and 10 again, the uh, was BlackBot again, and Salesforce.org, you beat me to it. But again, if you are a nonprofit, you can get 10 free seats mm -hmm. of Salesforce to start. And nonprofit tech is good.
Now, presenting facts visually, what do we mean? Infographics, of course. Everyone likes infographics. Here's one. I just throw it on there as an example. Um, Actually, I think the, the, those figures are now pretty outdated. I think it's something like 25% of the, of the internet is now uh, on WordPress, but I'm not sure. But they use, they use words and um, imagery to get the point across. So guidelines, there's tons of advice out there for, for this. And so just here's some, some ideas for na navigating all that advice, partly from my experience, but also from uh, some people I've, I think are pretty smart on this. First and foremost, if you have an infographic, you, you want to put an infographic out there. Make sure it answers the question. What's the question? Well, you have to figure it out yourself. But if, if you continually have trouble, a good hint is if you continually have trouble expressing something <coughs> in words, it may be a good candidate because of time, space constraints, just the complexity of the issue, it may be a good candidate for a, an infographic. You want to test. Test to be sure. Try it out among, you know, an inner core of, of, um, of your constituents, your fellow, you know, your, your co-workers, but test with a variety of audiences. And this is one I wasn't aware of until someone pointed it out to me. You really want to avoid 3D and stacked charts. They don't come off well. And they definitely don't come off well on, online. Um, maps are cool, but they're really cool when you can make them interactive. And um, I'm a big fan of maps. I think particularly if your, your work is geographically oriented, um, you really want to use maps in a variety of ways to show figures, to show results. Um, you're going to tell stories. We'll get to that in a second. But there's a, there's a downside to that. You're telling a story, you better have your facts straight because you will be challenged. And the infographics are very easy to, ch to challenge. So you need reality checks. Make sure you have fact checkers checking out the information in your infographics. And of course, the goal <coughs> for any good infographic is new insight. Some examples. Oops. I love this one. It's from NOAA. It's, it's complex. It's a little busy. But uh, boy, there's a lot of information there on how people can be a little more green. So resources here that I've played with. Um, the first is Infogram. Um, it's a fairly uh, simple um, site. It's, uh, it was free last time I checked, but it was surprisingly good for working with WordPress and online work. And this Easily, it's still free, I think. It's drag and drop. Um, and they have an unfortunate uh, name for their themes. They're called Themes. I'm not so sure I'm happy with that, but they have, it's pretty, pretty nice. You want to check those out. PictoChat is probably the, um, I think, one of the all-time um, grand baddies of the, of the field. It's um, got a limited selection, but it's um, very popular, and it's um, been used by hundreds of people who found it very reliable. It does cost money. Then Vengage. Um, this is a newcomer. I like it a lot. Uh, they offer a variety of templates for reports, for financial reports. They, they, they really offer you a lot of help. Um, again, a little, bit, a little bit of money, but you don't have to spend too much on it. Um, I think that of all the ones, this is the one I think has the most uh, promise for WordPress because of the flexibility and the variety of um, templates they offer. The good news you don't even have to go to those anymore. When I did, first did this presentation a year and a half ago, uh, there wasn't a lot of um, infographic options available at WordPress.org. That has changed. There is a lot available. Some of them are really nice and free. All right, blogging. You know, it's WordPress. What are you going to say? It's blogging. Um, but I'm going to offer some thoughts. This is personal. Um, Nonprofit. This is kind of to, uh, my observation of what goes wrong in some nonprofit blogs. First and foremost, uh, you really need to talk about the mission. Focus on the mission, not the need for money. Money is important. You should have, um, again, the donation button on every page. But don't talk about money so much. You can talk about it in campaigns and everything, but many nonprofits fall into the trap of everything they 
um, published on their blog ends up being a, you know, a pitch for more money. Don't do it. Smart, not smart ass. Well, <clears throat> we're in danger of that now because a lot of the, a lot of the nonprofit world is getting politicized. And uh, you need to be smart, meaning you need to be you know, hip. You need to have a tone that's knowledgeable, well-written, literate, but not too edgy. You've got to be careful about being edgy if you're a nonprofit. And, and if you look at some nonprofits right now, because of what's happened politically, some of them are getting a little overboard. They're really losing it. And it's not going to help them long term. Uh, you need to be informative, not promotional. Um, that almost goes without saying, but you'd be surprised how hard some nonprofits sell in their blog. Connected, not insular. Connected mean, meaning, make sure you're not just talking about, you know, writing about yourself. Use links. Be a, be a resource in the blog of other people, other organizations, other entities other initiatives, other problems that may have a, even maybe just a slight relate, even a slight relation to your mission, but you know if they have any connection at all, the blog should contain sort of a, a, be a resource that people feel real feel good about going to and learning more about the greater world, the the systemic issues that you deal with. Affirmative, not whiny. <coughs> what can I say? Um, positive. You don't go in there and you know, with all the hand wringing and everything that you hear today. Don't do it. Be 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 affirmative. You're out there to solve a problem, and your blog needs to have that tone. Um, news, not memos. That just means don't be bureaucratic. Make it newsy. Make it worth reading. Don't just uh, make an announcement and uh, use it in the bureaucratic terminology you might use for an internal memo. Uh, personable, not faceless. I think that goes with the blogging in general. But again, work at it. And finally, honest emotion, not overwrought angst. I've just thrown that in there because of what I've been seeing over the past few weeks. Um, you know, the sky isn't always falling, and if you say it too much, people stop listening to you. Um, so don't overdo it. All right, <clears throat> time for the rant. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm appalled to, to this day. Uh, my, ba my background, by the way, is working with the media what I've got uh, globally uh, here in Boston, um, and getting information in the hands of people that need to have it. You'd be shocked at how poorly many, most nonprofits are handling this aspect of their mission online. I'm shocked. It's essential. You know, they're just not, they're commonly missing. Um, the, so the newsroom's really not just for the media. It's for all stakeholders. Anyone who's interested in your organization, need to, need, you need to think about all sorts of information that helps you inform them. And it's all there, financials. The most important ones, again, infographics, news coverage, archive, fact sheets, so on and so forth. The financials, don't forget the financials. You can post your Form 990, which it, for those not in the nonprofit world, that is the, uh, the tax document. Um, that you have to file with the IRS. And um, it's the first thing I look for when I want to work with a nonprofit. I want to look at their financials and what they're doing. Now, savvy audiences will take those financials and fly, you know, those modest ratios to them to find out how well you're managed. But there's also other things like what's your guide star rating? Do you have a, you know, a gold rating or a silver rating from guide star or any of those? Um, <clears throat> so pay particular attention to the financials without overdoing it. Uh, background or organizational management, yeah, they want to know who you are and where you've been. They don't, you know, you need to have that. And this is the one that gets me. I can't tell you the number of times I've gone to a website saying, okay, who do I contact? And if you ask anyone at the Globe, CNN, ABC, NPR, their biggest gripe about nonprofit websites, this is it. It's very simple. Who do they contact? If you want to be in development, who does a foundation contact in development? That's the basic information. Now, don't forget this. The media contact is 24 hours. These people work on a 24-hour cycle. It's not always pleasant. Um, but someone has to have that responsibility for a 24-hour availability. And I've had my share of calls at 2 in the morning and 3 in the morning with either good news or great. Usually it's bad news. But um, someone needs to be there to manage it. Mail to link adequate, or you need a form? I'm, I'm an email form, or is mail to okay? Uh, I, <coughs> I would go with mail to, make it simple. I don't know, it's a good question, though. 
Uh, I'm just talking about a phone number is more important than anything. I want the truth. In terms of how to contact the contact, the, yeah, a phone is really important. Finally, you know, WordPress is really excellent for storytelling. That's because it's sort of built in to its DNA, if you will. Um, it's journal-based, template-based CMS, and it has an enormous system. It's really ideal for it. But what does that mean? It means it really makes it easy to do the short-form types of um, blogging that are essential to nonprofit work. That's built right in. But there are also templates for long form. Do you know what I mean by long form? Like, anyone have any issues about that? Um, you know, if it's on medium, it's long form. But long form, they have great templates for managing long form and making, indexing them, making them available, uh, and having people be able to search them. Um, and it's easy integration in media in all formats. There are a lot of tools for this. Here are two things that have just popped up. I've just noticed them in the, um, uh, in the WordPress.org, which are really useful. Every organization, by the way, in terms of communication, needs a communication calendar. I believe someone said that last month. That's the same thing. You need a communication calendar so you can strategically think about what you're doing, when you're doing it, and how it syncs up with other programs you're, you're trying to work with. Um, and there's a nice... Nice one up here. It's called, it's called editorial calendar. It's, it's supposed to be a great one, and it makes it easy to manage the whole process within WordPress. And if your communication program is web-centric, it's a great way to do it. This is one I'm just playing with, just starting to play with. It's called the ASAP Story Engine. It helps you actually develop the stories in terms of content, your, your, your media resources, um, free. Um, I'm not going to give a, an opinion on it because I haven't used it enough, but it was intriguing enough for me to give it a try. I just started to roll it out about two weeks ago, so I'm just thinking about it. Discussion, Q&A. These are some ideas, but I'd like to handle any questions you guys have. Got 10 more? I have room for that, huh? Good. Um, you know, there's a question. I get a, from a lot of people, when should a nonprofit handle things internally? And when should they think about going outside? My recommendation always is to develop the resources as much as they can internally, but don't count on it in terms of the technical expertise that I think a lot of the people in this room would provide. Um, you need to seek outside expertise when, when you want to expand when you don't, when a nonprofit definitely doesn't have the resources to do it internally, but also when the mission is essential. You don't want to have do-overs, and that's what I found. Um, yeah. Points out to who should own the site. You have a communication manager, that's usually it. But if you're fortunate enough to have a webmaster, uh, yeah, you want someone who has a sense of editorial control as well. So um, I, my experience is that um, it's kind of a, a mix of things. And some people who don't feel they have the editorial skills probably are, are fine managing the technical aspects of it. But someone has to own it, and someone has to oversee both the, the editorial and the technical aspects of the site. It can't just be left to one person with one set of skills. 